These are some of the things that God does before he brings you that spouse that you've been believing him for. In this video, I'll share seven signs that God might be preparing you for marriage. But before we begin, please know that these signs won't necessarily happen in any particular order. Some may happen before others or some or even all may happen at the same time. How God works things out in your life will depend on your own unique journey with him. As I go through these signs, please let me know in the comments if you're seeing any signs that God might be preparing you for marriage. I'd love to hear from you. Now let's get into it. So one sign that God might be preparing you for marriage is that an announcement goes ahead of you. The book of Esther chapter 2 verses 2 to 4 says, Then the king's personal attendants proposed, Let a search be made for beautiful young virgins for the king. Let the king appoint commissioners in every province of his realm to bring all these beautiful young women into the harem at the citadel of Susa. Let them be placed under the care of Haggai, the king's eunuch, who is in charge of the women, and let beauty treatments be given to them. Verse 4 says, Then let the young woman who pleases the king be queen instead of Vashti. This advice appealed to the king and he followed it. Genesis chapter 24 verses 2 to 4 says, He said to the senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had. Put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. Now what this means is that when God decides that it is the season for you to get married, he sends word ahead of you concerning your marriage. At this time, he starts speaking to you about marriage and instructing your destiny helpers regarding what to do. There will be divine connections as he starts mobilizing those that he has assigned to help you on this journey. So maybe you've been receiving a lot of prophetic words about your future marriage or have been having dreams about marriage. Or maybe suddenly the desire for marriage becomes intensified in your heart. If any of these things apply to you, you could very well be in your announcement season, which is why it's really important to learn how to hear God's voice before now. You need to learn to hear God's voice, especially before you enter into this season so that you don't make a mistake or misunderstand or miss out on anything that he's telling you in this season. God used to speak a lot to me through dreams. And if you've been following my story, you know, Mr. Man, if you don't, I'll link his story somewhere here. Um, and I've shared how God spoke to me. Um, through dreams concerning him but unfortunately because I hadn't developed um, or hadn't learned how to properly hear from God through my dreams I ended up messing up that particular situation because I didn't completely understand all he was trying to tell me at that time so like I said earlier this is the season where God provides you with help he will connect you with destiny helpers, with teachers, with mentors, with matchmakers, just like he did for Rebecca, Ruth, and Esther. Abraham's servant was Rebecca's matchmaker. Haggai and Naomi were Esther and Ruth's mentors. But it's important to realize that these helpers may not look like it. So you need to be really discerning so that you do not despise their help. Scripture says that Abraham's servant was the oldest in his household, meaning dude was old. Rebecca could easily have ignored him and instead have gone to look for one of the more younger eligible bachelors to help because she would have felt like this old guy has nothing to offer me. But then she would have missed out on the one that was assigned to connect her to her husband. Unfortunately, a lot of people are transactional in nature, only doing things for what they think they can get in return. So ask yourself, would you have assisted Abraham's servant if you were the one that was in Rebecca's shoes? In Esther's case, you could have easily have said that Hagar had nothing to offer her since after all, he was just a servant. But Esther honored him. And in addition to all the favor that he showed her, he also told her what she should take with her when she was going in to see the king. 
And the advice that he gave her could very well have been the thing that tipped the scale in her favors. In Ruth's case, Naomi had absolutely nothing to offer her, which was actually the reason that Opar went back and did not go ahead with Naomi. But Ruth stuck beside Naomi in spite of all of that. And look where he got her. So do not despise your helpers, but you also need to be discerning enough to know whose help not to accept. I am reminded of King Rehoboam, Solomon's son, who listened to the wrong advice, which led to part of the kingdom being ripped from his hands. Please know that it's not when you enter into a season of marriage that God starts frantically looking around for people to help you. I find it really interesting that both Abraham's servant and Naomi were old. They were both older than the people that they were supposed to be helping. So no, this doesn't mean you should only accept help from old people. <laughs> but I believe that it's symbolic of how far ahead God thinks. How he sets things in motion and put things in place even before you were born. Now, if Holy Spirit has highlighted me to you as one of the people that he has designated to help you, and you feel he is leading you to be mentored by me on your journey of preparation, then sign up to join the Revealed Bride community. I leave the link in the description. And if this sign resonates with you, make sure to hit the like button so this video can reach others who might need this word. The next sign that God might be preparing you for marriage can be found in Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3, which says, this is what the Lord says to the people of Judah and to Jerusalem. Break up your unplowed ground and do not sow among thorns. Stay with me a moment. I'm going somewhere with this. The easy translation of this verse says, prepare yourselves like a farmer who plows his fields. Do not plant your seeds where weeds are growing. The amplified version says, Plow your uncultivated ground for a season and do not sow among thorns. So in this case, fallow ground means ground that has the capacity to be productive, but has not recently been prepared for planting. So it needs to be broken up. Now, if you know a little bit about farming or gardening, you know that before something is planted, the ground first needs to be prepared. So a sign that God might be preparing you for marriage is that he will begin to prepare the ground of your heart, your heart being your mind, your will, and your emotions. In this case, the seed to be planted is the word that God has spoken about you, the word that he has spoken concerning your future marriage. And the ground that the seed will be planted in is your heart. So what God is doing in this season is that he's working on your heart. And taking you through a period of healing. He'll bring a lot of stuff up to the surface so that it can be dealt with. Because if not properly dealt with, these things have the capacity to choke up the seed of the word that he's planting in your heart. These things have capacity to ruin your future marriage or even prevent or delay the marriage. So in this season, you do a lot of inner self work. He'll have you addressing things like past trauma, brokenness, pain, hurt from past relationships, bitterness, really anything that has clogged up your heart. In my case, there was a lot of self-image work that he had to do in me. If this sign resonates with you and you believe that God has been dealing with your heart in this season, type work in progress in the comments and I'll say a little prayer for you. The next sign that God might be preparing you for marriage is found in Matthew 13 verse 3 to 8. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no roots. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. 
This next sign means that God plants you. In planting you, he not only positions you where you'll be found, but he also positions you where the seed of his word will be nurtured. I hope you notice that the verses in Matthew 13 also shows us why it's important that God works on our hearts before he plants the seeds in us. You see that all the seeds that were not planted in good soil eventually died for one reason or the other. Anyways, in this season of planting, obedience is extremely important. I cannot overemphasize the importance of being correctly positioned as well as yielding to God so that he will correctly position you. This was the case with my husband and I. We met at fellowship, but what you may not know is that I almost didn't attend that particular fellowship. You see, I had been attending my church for a while and God began to convict me that it was time to serve at church. But in order for that to happen, I first had to be part of the the church's fellowship system. So I started looking for a fellowship to attend and I felt like Holy Spirit highlighted one in particular that he wanted me to go to. So I went there and after fellowship, there was introductions going on. And I remember the fellowship leader was there and the head of the fellowships in the area or in the sector, I can't remember, but someone really high up was also there. And when they asked where I lived, they were really shocked that, oh, that there were so many other fellowship centers that I could attend before that one. Now, the way they set up the structure is they wanted you to attend the fellowship really close to your house so that if the weather was really bad or there was anything, you wouldn't have any excuse not to be able to go because your fellowship was like really close to your place. So they were trying to encourage me to move somewhere closer to my house, but I felt like that was where Holy Spirit wanted me to be. So I stood my ground and insisted that was where I was going to stay. And a few months after that, my husband starts attending that fellowship. Now, in this video, Muiwa goes more in depth about how he knew that I was the one. But for the purpose of this video, I'll just share a little bit of the story. I'll keep it as short as possible. So when God initially spoke to Muiwa about me, he was a little bit hesitant because I wasn't his type. But as he began to think of all that he knew about me from the time that we had spent together in fellowship, he realized that it was exactly what he needed. If I ended up not attending that particular fellowship, Muiwa and I could have met anywhere. But the time that we spent together at fellowship was necessary for him to get to know me and for him to subsequently recognize me as his wife. If I had not yielded to God and allowed him to plant me first in that church, And then in that fellowship, Muiwa and I may not be married today. And we see God do this in the lives of Rebecca and Ruth. At the time, Rebecca was supposed to be out fetching water. She was out fetching water and not trying to position herself with the younger, more eligible bachelors. It's also important to realize that positioning isn't necessarily a one-off thing. It's a thing of constant obedience. For example, Ruth appears to have been positioned on multiple occasions. First, by returning with Naomi to the land of Judah. Then by working on Boaz's field. Then finally at Boaz's feet. There are a lot of people that should currently be positioned in the place of service, but they feel like things like that are beneath them. Meanwhile, this is the place where their future husband is supposed to find them. I know everyone gets really excited when we start talking about positioning because it signals that the waiting season might be coming to an end. But please know that positioning won't get you very far if you do not have the character to sustain it. Which leads us to the next sign that God might be preparing you for marriage, which is that he will prune you. Ruth chapter 2 verses 5 and 6 says, Boaz asked the overseer of his harvesters, who does that young woman belong to? The overseer replied, she is the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. Verse 11 tells us, Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know before. So you see, before Boaz ever approached Ruth, he had observed her and inquired about her. 
and a good report of her was given to him. Yes, she was correctly positioned, but her character spoke for her. If Boaz had received a bad report about her, things would probably have been dead on arrival and that would just have been the end of things. So ask yourself, if anyone inquires about you right now, what report would they receive? And this isn't to discourage anyone if you've had a not so good past or whatever. That is what this season is for, for God to prune you. So a sign that you should look out for that God might be preparing you for marriage is that he's pruning you. And in pruning you, he's working on your character. He will strip you of character traits that do not line up with where he's taking you. And at the same time, he will build up the fruits of the spirit within you. Your character will be pruned and tested. Just like um, Rebecca's character was tested when Abraham's servant asked her for a drink of water. What he was actually testing for was kindness. This is also the season where God will teach you patience. Oh, your patience will be tested. James 1 4 says, But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Aside from the fact that you will need an unimaginable amount of patience in marriage, God also uses patience to work out different things in us. And one thing that patience does is to build your faith, is to build your trust in God. I like to think that Abraham was able to trust God when God asked him to sacrifice Isaac because of the trust that he had built, the trust that he had developed in God in his waiting season for God to provide Isaac. Please know that just because you're waiting doesn't mean that nothing is happening. Abraham's servants traveled approximately 1,300 kilometers to find Rebecca, a journey that would have taken approximately six weeks for him to get to his destination and almost double the time to get Rebecca to her husband. So think about it this way. Rebecca may have been believing God for a husband and wondering why it was taking so long, but she didn't even realize that Abraham's servant, a person that would connect her to her husband, was already on his way to her, a journey that took him six weeks. Even when he got there and the news came that, oh yes, you're getting married, you're going to be getting married and I'm taking you to your husband, it wasn't an immediate thing. She still had to journey an additional 12 weeks to get to Isaac. And it's the same for you. You might have been waiting on God for a while, but know that God is working. This is also the season in which he will change your identity. In Ruth chapter 2 verse 6, we see that Ruth was first described as a Moabitess, which was the identity of her past. But by Ruth chapter 3 verse 11, we see her described as a virtuous woman. Please know that pruning does not mean perfection. You will not become perfect by any stretch of the imagination. God is not looking for perfection, but God is working on you to get you to the level where you will not break or destroy or abort or delay the thing that he is preparing for you. Another sign that God might be preparing you for marriage is that you will be watered with the word of God. So in addition to pruning your character, he will also grow you spiritually. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification so that you never miss a new video. Also, please give this video a thumbs up if it has been helpful to you. Another sign that God might be preparing you for marriage is that he will protect you from weeds. Here, weeds are all sorts of things that are trying to choke up the seed that God has planted, the word that God has spoken over you, the word that God has spoken concerning your future marriage. In this season, you have to be extremely discerning in order to be able to differentiate between good and God. Weeds can show up as anything. They can show up as counterfeits. They can show up as temptation, even discouragement and all sorts of weird spiritual attacks. In Genesis 24, 55, we see that Rebecca's own family tried to delay her marriage, but she stood her ground and said she would go with Abraham's servants. God protecting you from weeds in this season can also look like him hiding you where maybe you enter what a lot of people call a dry spell. It's like nobody seems to be approaching you. Nobody seems to be attracted to you. A lot of people consider it to be sort of like God hiding you in his secret place, 
protecting you from counterfeits, protecting you from wolves in sheep's clothing as he prepares you. If you feel like you're in this season, please know that the closer you get to birthing, the more painful the birth pangs. Another sign that God might be preparing you for marriage is that you suddenly start glowing. Some people call the glory of marriage. It's like you were previously hidden, but God has now brought you out. And all of a sudden, all sorts of people start getting attracted to you much more than usual. So maybe for a while you felt like there were no prospects in sight. Then suddenly all sorts of people, maybe even your male friends who were not previously interested, start showing interest. When this begins to happen, again, you need to be extremely discerning to be able to discern between good and God. Because not every good thing or good person that approaches you is your God person. Some of them might be counterfeits. Some of them might be wolves in sheep clothing, but they're pretty much designed to waste your time. And I share my experience with Mr. Time Waster in this video because this is another season where counterfeits operate. Now, just because you've begun to glow doesn't necessarily mean the time, the specific time for harvest is now. However, it could mean that it is close. Just like different plants are harvested at different times. The time that God has set for your own marriage won't necessarily be the same time as everybody else. Even if you feel like you guys started your journey at the same time. I hope this video has encouraged you and helped you recognize some of the signs that God might be preparing you for marriage. Remember, everyone's journey is unique. But let me know which of these signs really resonated with you as I'd love to pray for you and I'll see you in the next one.